Great, I think that's recording now. So yep. as I mentioned, my name is Elaine Ray. Um, I'm the Marketing Manager within the College of Arts, Social Sciences and Celtic Studies at NUI Galway. And I'm delighted to be moderating our postgraduate programs in Geography, Archaeology and Environment. So the format for today will be, um, we will be going um, and giving an overview of four different programs and my colleagues um, that are joining me today um, will, be, will be doing this. So um, I have um, Professor John Marcy uh, and John will be giving an overview of the MA Environment uh, Society and Development. Um, Dr. Liam Carr will be giving an overview of the MSc Coastal and Marine Environments. Um, Dr. Therese Conway will be giving an overview of the MA Rural Futures Planning Innovation Programme. Um, excuse me, I have duplicated the marine environments, but um, uh, as I mentioned, my colleague Dr. Liam Carr will be giving an overview of this. And then um, Dr. Stefan Berg will be giving an overview of the High Diploma in Archaeology and the MA in Landscape Archaeology. Um, so um, I would just like to encourage all the participants to um, put any questions that you might have throughout any of the presentations into the chat feature. And after the presentations, we will um, address all of the questions then. Um, so any questions that you might have, um, please feel free to pop in the chat. Or if you're feeling brave enough at the end, you know, please feel free to ask um, either you know, by unmuting your mic or um, putting on your video, but um, you might feel more comfortable popping them in the chat. Um, yeah, so I think without further ado, what I will do is I will hand uh, hand over to my colleague, um, Professor John Marcy, for a, an overview of the MA uh, Environment Society and Development. Thanks, Elaine. Folks, you're very welcome. Um, Look, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult task, I suppose, to uh, not meet you all in person, um, but we're all delighted that you can join us. Um, just to give you flavor for our master's programs in geography, and I think increasingly you'll find when you leave, um, you know, anyway, go away, it's really important to have a master's more generally, I think. So it's definitely worth considering all of our master's options in geography, archaeology, and Irish studies within our school. Um, and, you know, we've got a brilliant, set of teaching colleagues who, as you know from your undergraduate in, in geography, archaeology and Irish studies, you know, we're committed to, you know, giving you the best opportunities possible. So I, I really hope you can sort of uh, see that as an option for, for master's teaching and, and, and programs as well. So the first program you're going to hear about is a program that I direct called the MA in Environment Society and Development. And I suppose in our contemporary world, um, this year especially, we've seen how precarious we are, how interconnected we are um, in terms of overlapping environmental, social, political and, and other contexts. Um, the pandemic has shown that more than anything um, and it has prompted us, I think, to consider why it's important to think very critically about how interconnected we are um, and to think very, very crucially around questions of ecological overstepping um, and the ways in which health security feeds into a whole range of other concerns in relation to development. And this master's in a nutshell is really centered on considering how international development theory and practice um, is, is operated. It has a number of modules that, that sort of focus in, in particular, on security, on environmental justice, on community engagement, um, and it culminates in how we can be, uh, you know, creative and innovative in building civil society, um, in doing things differently, in doing interventionism differently, in thinking about the pan pandemic, for example, differently. And uh, that then culminates in a field-based learning module, um, and all of the programs in geography and archaeology have a really, really important field-based learning module. And that gives you enormous um, confidence, I think, when you leave in terms of having had that experience on the ground. Uh, and it will really stand out in your CV. <coughs> Sorry, our, our own <coughs> field-based learning um, module culminates in Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, which I'll talk about in a second. So in a nutshell, the vision of our MA program in environment society and development is first of all a critique of interventionism um, and they may be geopolitical, um, military, developmental, environmental or humanitarian. So it's a, a whole series of critiques from post-colonialism, from Marxism, from political ecology, from feminism and so on. And then the bigger question at the very heart of the program is what happens after critique? 
How do we enact, in other words, more transformative participatory forms of development in the most precarious spaces? How do we build consensus around critical knowledge? And in a post-truth world dominated by you know, uh, the most abstracted forms of knowledge, um, we need to you know, think very critically how we can bring expertise into the public realm and do so with, with a view to building consensus and informed knowledge and practice in and with communities. So I think that's really, really vital. And it's something we've long thought about in the context of our RMA. So uh, here are the modules. Um, I won't go into them in detail here. Um, I think what's probably more important is to sort of give you a sense that all of these modules really address questions of interventionism, questions of development, and tie them into specific aspects to do with envir environmental risk, to do with development and justice. And it culminates then in a field-based learning um, module, which, which um, is based in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, I suppose that's one of the key selling points um, of all of our programs in geography and archaeology. Uh, in our own one, it ties into a career development path, which builds upon exactly that field-based learning experience. Um, it prepares students for a range of workplaces and you know just looking at um, our graduates over the last number of years they've gone on to work in the UN various NGOs international national and otherwise planning project management agencies specialist research policy institutes and so on um, and it may be on local levels too and that's really really important it could be Galway City Council I mean we need planners I mean Trey's will tell you this in a few minutes um, we need people who are informed we need people who are capable of working with communities and, and selling, you know, um, in really positive and progressive ways, um, better visions of the world. So, you know, it, it, it isn't just NGOs and government agencies overseas that, that um, this program is, is orientated towards. Subsequent um, PhD research also has gone, um, has, has been built from, from the MA um, at NUI Galway and elsewhere in, in really, really top universities all over the world. Um, so our students from this program and all of the programs actually will walk into a PhD program. I can guarantee you that that's the standard that we set. Uh, and that's really, really important to sort of bear in mind is that's exactly where you will be when you leave here. You will walk into, these are the best departments in the world in geography. And our students have comfortably, comfortably done PhDs there. So just the last couple of slides. Um, there's, there's a number of reasons for, I suppose, choosing any MA program. For our own one, I think the really important thing is that it's about, yes, academic excellence, but it's it's in tandem with that is it's about applied critical knowledge. It's about working in field contexts. It's about working in, in, a, in a problem solving environment where you can work in and with a community. And there are multiple field based learning elements, both within Galway and also in the overseas element as well. And that's really about civic engagement. And I think that's one of the, the most important aspects of the program is that you, having done the program, will be much more comfortable working in and with communities. I think that's really, really important. The final thing is that it's student-centered. It's an award-winning you know, uh, program that has won you know, President's Awards for Teaching Excellence and also the National Academy Award for Integration and Research Teaching and Learning. That all sounds very formal, but I suppose the more informal way of saying that is that we're absolutely committed to our students. It's the most enjoyable and everybody, all of my colleagues will tell you this, it's the most enjoyable part of our teaching week is teaching our master's classes. So, you know, we, we are committed to it and we learn a huge amount from working with you. And that's really, really important. Our students from over the years has, have also come from all over, all over the world and they've really added to the program. And I think you'll benefit from that as, as well. Okay, just to finish, um, it's really important as well to think about the NUIG Gal uh, uh, Galway scholarships. Um, there's 1500 for any EU student with first class honours degree. So push on in your undergraduate um, efforts, folks. Um, you're, you're more than capable and really, really, we, wa we want you to, uh, to see you doing justice to yourselves. In our own programme, we have a Neil Swift Graduate Research Award, which is a very prestigious award for people who follow on and go on and do PhDs and so on. Um, in honor of our first um, uh, external examiner, Neil Smith from CUNY in New York, who died sadly a few years ago. And finally, if you go onto our website, um, just for this final slide, Elaine, um, yeah. So if you go onto our website, you'll find student testimonials. You'll find a lot more information as well um, about just the program, how to, how to join, um, how to uh, apply and so on. 
Um, and I think you'll get an overwhelming sense from all the programs here, including our own, is that students really enjoy it. And I think that's really, really important. Um, you know, you, Galway is a great place to live, but it's really important, I think, to commit to a year where you'll, you'll have an enjoyable time on, on, on a master's program. And I, and I think we'll be able to provide that um, on, on all of our programs in, in the school. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. And sorry, the last slide is, if, if you need anything at all, just send an email um, to john.morrissey.nuygalway.ie. I'll be more than happy to, to follow through with any comments, questions you have, um, you know, in addition to today's um, talk. Any, any questions you have now, perfect as well. I'm not sure, Elaine, do you, do you want to take questions now or is it at the end? Um, no, what we might do is we, we'll just get through the presentation, so yeah. that's okay, yeah. John. And, um, yeah. Again, um, just welcome to anyone who's who's joined. Um, if you have any questions throughout the presentations, pl uh, please do pop them in the chat feature and we'll um, address all of those um, at the end. Um, so now I'm going to um, move on to the MA and rural, in uh, rural Futures Planning and Innovation and um, pass you over to Dr. Um, Therese Conway. Thank you. Thanks a million, Elaine, and thanks, John. I think, guys, hopefully already you're beginning to see the enthusiasm we have for our pool of MAs here. And regardless of, I suppose, which one you choose, um, having spoken to us today, it, it is about the, the environment in which, which we create as well. So I am, my name is Therese Conway. I'm the coordinator of the MA Rural Futures Planning and Innovation. This is a new programme. It launched officially uh, this year in 2020. So we have our first cohort. But it is developed on the back of a previous MA in World Sustainability and from that guys we, we repurposed the programme against the increasing consideration that's been afforded to the future of rural areas and how the role of planning and innovation fits within this, this guise. So in terms of why you would want to, to focus on this particular course, over the last number of decades the rural area has been central to the discourse in terms of sustainable development. Um, and while there is extensive practice and, and academic discourse around the, the various elements of, of rural planning and rural futures in terms of land pressures, spatial planning, agriculture, multifunctionality, it's more recent to change our discourse to look towards what does what these rural areas look like and what is the longer term impact? I think it just has my head fried. Can I just, um, could I ask all the participants just to mute, mute themselves, please? Sorry, we're just getting some, some sounds. So if everyone could just um, put their microphones on mute, please, that would be great. Thanks. Thanks, Melinda Lynn. So from this then, the folk, the, the uh, programme really focuses on the various yeah. aspects of rural futures and how we can challenge this discourse in terms of what the rural future looks like. So Elaine, you can tip on to the next one. Okay, so what we look at in, in the programme itself is particularly aspects of policy making and its fundamental role in rural futures. A strong tenant and focus of the programme draws on long-term trends in collaboration and communicative planning and the engagement with our communities. And John has alluded to this in the, in the previous presentation. It is, it's a very strong focus of what we offer at NUI Galway. As the programme also focuses on innovation, this is built on the realisation that the profile of rural areas is evolving. And in the, that regard, while agriculture is very much a mainstay of rural economies, the bulk of our rural economy now is essentially changing and the opportunities are coming from more niche forms of, of business and enterprise, for example, tourism and other innovative businesses in this regard. So what this program does is it approaches and reflects on these increased demands for unique rural areas and a unique way to address the discourse and conversations that occur around enhancing rural livelihoods in this regard. So what will the program allow graduates to do? First of all, in terms of the, the discourse and discussion around policy and theory, you will look at the future planning needs of these rural areas. It will be done through looking at practice strategies, engaging with communities of practice, policy, and really moving away from what was a reactive and a low impact intervention approach to rural development. In terms of the person themselves, then we really will skill and train you to have confidence in your own ability, ability to identify and critically engage with this, this conversation around rural futures planning. And this is all done then with engagement with an, an expert community, be it in NUI Galway, in terms of the staff from our World Studies cluster, 
but also those communities of practice that we engage with. Even in a time of COVID this year, we already have had engagement with eight external speakers from uh, the local authority planners in Galway, rural practitioners in rural development. We've also had representatives from the Department of Climate and Action in terms of the, the space for rural in terms of climate mitigation. We've had people from rural transport practice from Jacobs and Cork. So we, even in a COVID area, we are trying to engage and continue the engagement with the expert community in this regard. So some general information, it is a master's program that's spread over three semesters, three modules in semester one, three in semester two, and one module, which is your research and professional development portfolio in semester three. All of them, um, each semester is 30 credits and everything is continuous assessment in terms of your, your assessment uh, practice. So to give you a flavor of some of the modules, we look at the introduction to the concept of futures planning and in particular development practice in rural planning more especially, um, rural futures and the multifunctional countryside, enterprise and innovation. We look at tourism networks and planning for rural service provision. And again, the, the research and professional development portfolio. So finally, some concluding marks, remarks. Uh, the program really will equip you to be experts in thinking innovatively about the rural future and rural areas. In doing that, we draw on the expertise of the NUI Galway geography staff, but also um, to our pool of external experts. So in that regard, you will be exposed to a variety of ways of assessing and exploring the rural. The program is developed on strong theoretical foundations and again with these exceptional practice contexts. What I really want to highlight out here as well is our unique location in the west of Ireland where these contemporary issues can essentially be explored but all of these issues have a global significance so whether it is Connemara they'll have a, a, as much a relevance globally a, as where they're explored. So in terms of employment opportunities um, even though this is a new program our, our previous graduates from the last uh, rural masters in sustainability have gone on to work in government departments, planning offices, tourism offices, um, some of them have gone on to continue PhD research and study and also international opportunities in that regard. So there are plenty of career opportunities coming off the back of the program as well. So finally, if you have any queries or questions, you can direct them to myself, the program coordinator, or Dr. Mary Mahan, the program director. And I thank you all for joining us today. Thanks, Therese. And again, if, if anyone um, has any questions on the MRO Futures and Innovation, please, please do pop them in into the chat function and we'll address them at the end. Um, so next up, um, I'd like to um, introduce Dr. Liam Carr and Liam is going to uh, take us through an overview of the MSC in coastal and marine environments. Uh, thanks, Elaine. Uh, good morning and good afternoon to uh, the assembled. Uh, my name is Dr. Liam Carr. I am the program coordinator for the MSC Coastal Marine Environments here in geography at NUI Galway. Uh, in a nutshell, the MSC is a 12 month, uh, three semester program where students engage scientifically with uh, coastal marine environments and communities. Uh, use geographic and other uh, theoretical bases uh, and observe scientific principles and experiment and develop hypotheses um, that target uh, some of the pressing concerns of our coastal resources and our coastal communities and, and apply these tests in, in, a, in a critical fashion to help uh, improve uh, the lives and livelihoods um, of these uh, important places. Uh, please, next slide. Is a 12-month, uh, three-semester program, as I said. Um, we do have a two-part-time uh, track um, that is uh, generally more uh, appropriate for people who are already in a professional setting and are working to upskill. And, and don't have the time to commit to uh, a 12 month full-time uh, postgraduate program. Um, it is 90 ECTs and uh, 30 of those units are the research dissertation. So the so typical uh, autumn and spring terms uh, followed by a summer term where you complete your, your independent research. Uh, in terms of the subject content, uh, we, we introduced geographic theory, uh, methods and mapping. Uh, we do physical 
ge geography, coastal geomorphology, natural hazards. Um, we do appropriate assessment and EIA work. Uh, we focused on climate dynamics and uh, climate change uh, and paleoclimatology. And then we also bring in policy and planning through a uh, focus module on marine spatial planning um, at the EU and national levels. And throughout all of this uh, field-based learning, uh, we incorporate a high level of stakeholder engagement, whether it's uh, individuals uh, living and working along the coasts or within sectors or, or parts of Ireland where, where we do some of our field work. Um, we get into the field, um, we get our hands and feet wet, and uh, that requires us to understand the, the situation and the perspectives of these communities that we work within. And, and so stakeholder engagement is, is not just um, a piece of a module, it's a piece of the entire program. And it's, and it's something that we um, are very proud to, to support and to, to continue supporting. Uh, next, please. What makes the MSC unique? Um, as I said, in the last slide, uh, we do a lot of field-based learning. Uh, we have sites all the way from Cary uh, up to Donegal. Um, we have a small student to advisor ratio, um, which is uh, attractive for a number of students, particularly students um, coming from larger programs where you feel oftentimes a little bit like a statistic and less like a student. Um, generally speaking, we attract students from uh, across the sciences, uh, geography, of course, uh, marine science and biology, but we've also in, in the past years, we've had chemists, we've had uh, physics, uh, physicists, uh, astronomers, uh, English majors, a linguistics major, um, ecology, uh, you name it. Um, what ties every all, all the interests together is, is a passion for coastal marine issues, whether whether you come with a, with a strong science background and understand the science of things, but, but need to be introduced to how to work inside communities, um, or you come from a social science background and um, you're unfamiliar necessarily with uh, some of the more rigorous interpretations of, of applying the scientific method. Uh, students come with a set of skills and, and, we, and we burnish those skills while also developing others for their professional futures. Um, and, and so there's no rhyme or reason or mix and match of like, what is the, the right type of student um, all we ask is that that you work hard um, and you have a passion for coastal and uh, marine issues and, and wanting to work to solve them. If uh, you are interested, and I realize I'm going a lot faster than my colleagues, probably because I'm American and I'm cold and so I'm just getting to the punch. Um, uh, applications are now being received. Um, it is a small cohort. You know, we're, we, we generally have somewhere between 12 and 15 students in a class um, and and Elaine might be able to dis, uh, discuss and describe the, the application process uh, at NUI Galway, but we do um, a revolving system where applications are reviewed as they arrive and, and, and as, the, as the program fills, um, there are less seats to, um, to, to keep open. So applying earlier rather than later is, is strongly uh, encouraged. And, and as John uh, said in the first uh, packet of slides, you know, if if you are from an EU institution, you and you have a first honors overall, um, you are uh, eligible for uh, some academic awards and, and some scholarships. Um, finally, if you have any questions regarding the MSC or uh, anything related to the MSC, then what it's like, uh, where we're going next year, if we're going to have the cruise unofficially, yes, but I will let you know. Um, once the Marine Institute um, officially awards our four days at sea, um, send me an email and I, I'll be more than happy to uh, respond. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Liam. Um, that was really, really helpful and useful um, to get an overview of each of those three programs. Um, just in terms of your comment on um, the application process. So yes, all of all, the application is open for all of our programs. Um, and depending on the program, um, we'll stay open likely until um, the summer. But of course, some programs will fill up um, sooner than that. Um, uh, the For the application, you you can you apply online, uh, it's a 35 euro application fee and you can apply to two programs for that fee. Um, so if you are considering two different programs, it's it's worth applying to both. Um, and each program will have its own set of entry requirements, um, but there are some kind of more standardized requirements. Um, and 
in, in essence, the turnaround time for most programs um, is usually within two weeks. So once you apply, um, there's usually a two week turnaround time um, uh, to get a response. But again, that will depend some some program directors are really really um quick at doing that and, and others because of maybe the documentation that needs to be reviewed it takes a little bit more time and um, what i might do just before we go on to the programs in um archaeology and um, because we've we've looked at those three programs in the discipline of geography and um, just wondered if there were any questions um yet on that i'm just gonna have a quick look at the chat um i don't see any yet so um, I don't know if there's anyone who wants to ask a question, if they want to turn on their mic or if they uh, want to pop it in the chat. Um, and if not, we can keep going. And if anyone is considering um, or thinking about asking a question, maybe we can we will review it again at the end. So, OK, what we might do so is we'll, we'll keep going and we'll look at the programs in uh, archaeology and then we'll go back um, and see if there's any questions at the end. So um, next up, I am going to um, pass over to my colleague, Dr. Stefan Berg. Stefan is in the um, Department of Archaeology here at NUA Galway, um, which is housed within the School of Geography, Archaeology and Irish Studies. Um, and Stefan's going to bring us through the Higher Diploma in Archaeology and the MA in Landscape Archaeology. Thank you very much for that, Elaine. Uh, I'm just going to briefly, we have two different programs that are going to present today, and the High Diploma in Archaeology is a bit of a different beast because that has, it's designed to meet the requirements from students that have a degree in subjects other than archaeology, uh, that, but might have an interest in archaeology or probably have an interest in archaeology or like to pursue a career in archaeology. So uh, they, it's a level eight. Uh, program, but it also it's, creates a kind of a, a stepping stone to research in archaeology, and we see that over the years. And as I said, it's open to students with a primary degree in subjects other than archaeology. And uh, it's offered on a full time basis for one year in, in the 60s, or the part time uh, version over two years that might suit people that will be working part time and, and studying part time. And uh, the program is, as you all heard from the others as well, that it's very, like in, in our school, uh, it's very much field-based. And this is a good kind of mix between a desk-based and field-based learning. And it will equip you with very kind of uh, genuine and basic knowledge and skills to advocate for inheritance in your communities. We try to ground uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, course in, local project and I'll come to that in a second. Uh, sorry, could I go back to the previous one? Sorry, yeah. No, next one, sorry. There you go. So an important part of, of the program is that it also it includes a original piece of work that you do on an archaeology of your choice and preferably a place in the Irish landscape, probably quite often close to your home or in local community. And that's a kind of a set, you try to ground it then in the local heritage in your own environment. Next, please. Yeah. So it's, um, it consists of a uh, existing or a choice from existing undergraduate uh, modules in from second and third year. And uh, it offers you thereby kind of a sound and wide grounding in aspects of Irish and European archaeology on uh, to a BA degree. Uh, so it's based on literally on the existing uh, undergraduate courses, but also additional work that would actually give you the character of this higher diploma degree that you would get um, at the finishing of this program. Next one, please. So this is just a sample. This should actually says modules semester one and not year one at the top there. And uh, so this is give you a taste of what, what it entails. Uh, so you would have a, a strong kind of prehistoric Europe uh, and to start with uh, outlining the kind of early prehistory or going through the Bronze Age and Iron Age. But it also contains modules on castles and medieval uh, aspects of Ireland, also the ecclesiastical uh, aspects of Ireland, 
And so you have six or five core modules that you have to choose. And then you have an option uh, of, uh, like in this case, you can see the, the different kind of focus. So you could actually tailor it towards your, your own needs and, and, and desires when it comes to how you want to do to face or perform this course. Uh, the next one, please. Yeah, sorry. So when it comes to the HDIP, then the, the, that mod or that course is something that, that uh, attracts students that might generally just want to have an increase in interest in archaeology or students that would like to pursue a career in archaeology. And we quite often see that students that start with the, with the uh, HDIP with a higher diploma, they might continue into the MA Alaska of Archaeology. And we have a number of students that started with the HDIP, they continue into the, the MA in, in Archaeology and continue to a PhD. So it's a couple of stepping stones um, that, that is uh, the first kind of step into Archaeology for those that haven't done Archaeology before would be the HDIP. And that brings me to the MA in Landscape Archaeology uh, that we are now in the 17th year, believe it or not, uh, in, in the school. Next, please. So, and this is a, a uh, I mean, landscapes in different forms uh, has become an increasingly important part in understanding uh, societies and understanding human prehistory, but also in understanding how we do interact with our environment and the relation between place, landscape, and the interaction between those two is something that we really try to focus on in this course. The course is a very strong, has a strong balance between theoretical and practical aspects of current uh, landscape studies. And it has a strong focus then on the role of landscapes in, in today's society. And landscapes here, we have, we have kind of, the course has developed over the years and uh, we have, have developed kind of wider remit of what landscapes actually can contain. And I'll come back to that at the end, what also these type of dissertation, the work that you do in the landscape of your DMA could entail. So it's not necessarily uh, only archaeological landscapes that we deal with, as you'll see in a, in a moment. It's open to, was, no, sorry, go back. Yeah, it's open to students with a primary degree in archaeology. And yeah. uh, you need to have a two, two or equivalent and equivalent means that it's also the door is also open for, stu for students with different kinds of backgrounds that might fit into uh, the program and uh, with a genuine interest in landscape studies. You could take the course over one year, 90 ECTS, or as a part-time option over two years, and that's 45 ECTS per year. In the part-time option, uh, you do all the taught uh, modules in the first year and then the dissertation in the second year. So we are lucky enough to have a dedicated computer suite uh, at the department. Uh, so the students have their own uh, study space, which we're really, really happy to be able to, to, to offer. Uh, so you would get your own desk and your own PC and your own study space at the department over this the year. Uh, the number of students is limited to 12. And uh, so, and that also, there's a kind of reason for that, uh, that we'd, we'd also be, make it possible for us to bring you to places and landscapes that we normally wouldn't be able to bring a large cohort of students. Um, and we also do the best of that. So we, we spend a lot of the time outside and the field-based learning uh, part is uh, very, very important. So we use as many landscapes as we can around Ireland as a teaching environment. I mean, the landscape is our lab and that's where the best teaching is done, both practical and theoretical. Um, you will also, besides lectures, you will also have various workshops in different surveying techniques, as well as GIS tutorials. Uh, so it's also very kind of practically based in that sense, that we want to equip you with, with a strong sense for the various surveying techniques and recording techniques that are available uh, in landscape studies today. Another important part of this of the of the program and very popular is that we spend at least a week in the Boron in the university's old field based uh, center in Karen in the Boron. So the students uh, stay for a week and and uh, down in the Boron and they do a landscape analysis of a site that had been assigned and a site uh, or in that landscape that they had never 
ever seen before. So it's kind of a, a way to try out all the, the skills they have hopefully acquired uh, during the year. And next one, please. So um, the landscape consists of seven taught modules and a dissertation. And dissertation is a 15,000 words uh, and makes up 45% of the marks for the program. And this is just an outline of the different modules. Uh, I won't go through them in de detail, but the point is that we really start with a kind of a very strong theoretical grounding and, and then move on to the different ways that landscapes have been dealt with, both by uh, uh, the uh, researchers in the school, uh, but also by external researchers with different kind of case studies. We also have a point that we have a number of external lecturers coming in uh, to supply us in this, uh, support us in the aspect of the expertise that we wouldn't have in the school. And the, also we have a, a strong element of GIS, of course, uh, both theoretical and practical. And um, the managing landscape module in the middle there on, on the slide is a very important one, because that also sets the landscape studies and landscape archaeology into the planning process of today and uh, in the current society. So we, for, for that, we have a number of external, ex uh, ex uh, external lectures uh, from the Department uh, of Environment, uh, but also from the Heritage Council and from different uh, institutions that would be involved uh, in the landscape, in, in landscape studies in, uh, uh, when it comes to health management. We also have the, uh, lectures coming in from the commercial uh, sector, of course, which is, of course is an important employer. Uh, towards the end of, of the, of the uh, program, we have also presenting landscapes, uh, which is a very important module, how to communicate landscapes to a wider, um, wider audience. And we do that in different ways uh, that you will see in the program. So, uh, and then finally writing landscape dissertation. So we have a focus on the kind of special requirements uh, for dissertation focused on landscape studies. And uh, the last one, please. So as I said, uh, this MA will equip it wide as well as the Torres set of research skills in the field of archaeology and landscape studies. And it's very often that it creates a stepping stone towards uh, PhD research. And we recommend uh, students that plan for a PhD in archaeology that actually start with the one year MA, because uh, that would uh, give you all the kind of basic and very important research skills on different levels. So we have a number of students, of our MA students, that keep on. Uh, in archaeology and into a PhD level. We can also see that the uptake uh, when it comes to students and the continued um, employment uh, in the heritage sector is extremely good and we're very happy to see that. Uh, one thing that I also need to, to, to stress is that the landscape as a concept has widened quite a lot since we started this program about 70 years ago now. And uh, I just remember that the last, the, this year we had one dissertation, for example, on the murals in Belfast during the Troubles. And we also had a, a, a dissertation on the different kind of landscape of languages that we see, for example, in the valley in North Italy. Uh, so the dissertation doesn't necessarily need to be based on medieval ring forts in County Galway. We have a very kind of wide, um, view on what landscapes could contain and, and what they should contain. So my main message here is that it's a very wide remit when it comes to landscape studies. And we're trying to facilitate that those kind of studies for and to make the, the this this year a, a, such a rewarding year as it can be for you and to try to let, give you a hand to shape your studies as much as we can. And um, that's all, and I really urge you to, if you have questions, get in touch with me. And what I normally also do, besides trying to answer all the questions, of course, I do set you in, put you in touch with former students, because they could really tell you the real story of how enjoyable and, and, and hopefully rewarding this program is. So um, don't hesitate to contact me on the email on the screen there. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. And, and thank you to all our presenters who gave a really great overview all lots of detail um but done in a really kind of synced and digestible way so um really really appreciate that um again just i suppose to anyone who is 
um, watching or listening in today. Again, if you do have any questions now, now is a great opportunity while we have all of the program directors here to answer them. Or if you have any more general questions, um, please feel free to, to pop them into the chat. Um, I actually have a question, um, if that's okay. And it's kind of to all of you. Um, but I suppose while I was um, watching your presentations and also from what I know of the programs, um, the role of place and the role of, I suppose, Galway and the greater regional area plays such an important part in your programs. Um, and I suppose for the benefit maybe of students not from NUI Galway and maybe not even from Ireland who might be listening, um, you know, what, what would you say if they're considering a number of different masters programs in different places, what would you say doing your masters in, in NUI Galway and, and given the role of the place um, kind of brings to your masters and, 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 and might have over um, other masters, similar masters in other, in other locations? So I don't know if anyone wants to, yeah. wants to address that. Could I just start saying that, I mean, I, I, we have a number of students from the US, but also from UK and from different parts of Europe. Uh, coming to take this MA in, in landscape archaeology and I think we are really spoiled rotten when it comes to the type of landscape that we can offer and the, the, un, the also the unspoiled aspect of uh, the, the rural landscape in Ireland in the west of Ireland is something you really we realize how unique it is when you see the foreign students coming in and being in awe of the, all the possibilities for, for various levels of studies in this part of Ireland so um, Ireland as such as a fantastic lab for all kind of landscape studies, you know. Yeah, no, Elaine, I suppose I'd just add there, the way I would always look at things so when discussing um, the student <laughs> figures is two different, two different dimensions really, is the place in terms of where you're located in the school. A lot of our master's programs are thought on the same corridors as the staff, you get to, to engage with staff. I know this year is a little bit different, but we do try and integrate the students as much as we can in the place that is the university. And then secondly, Stefan has alluded to it, the living lab context that we have right in our doorstep where we can explore phenomena and ideas and concepts that are very transferable to global, global landscapes and global contexts as well. But we, we really have them within reaching distance. And I suppose for our own MA, even in terms of access to study sites along the Wild Atlantic Way, and that's the other thing for international students what they have on their doorstep outside of their involvement with an MA in terms of their enjoyment of the country is quite nice in terms of our geographical location. Yeah I, I can just follow up with that as well Elaine because uh, just uh, Teresa's latter point is absolutely crucial I mean our, our visiting students from overseas have all remarked upon that and um, you know, quality of life is hugely important, um, especially in our contemporary world now. We realize and appreciate that even more. Um, you know, even this year, you know, culturally, Galway still offered things during COVID um, in ways where, you know, other cities weren't able to do that. It is it is about maybe prioritizing that for our students as well. It isn't just about, um, you know, education within the classroom. It's education outside in a broader sense as well. And I think, colleagues right across the university have a great sense of that um, and it's it's heartening because you know we want students to be citizens of the world not just within Goa but when they leave here as well and, and appreciating the quality of life and the ways in which you know environmental concerns are hugely important I mean Goa is one of the best cities to live in in that sense um, and that appreciation of place is vital at the heart I think of all of our programs and you know we we dedicate a, a systematic way to sort of appreciate that through GIS, through mapping, through community engagement, through specific modules, but ultimately it's really about uh, being intuitive with your environment and, uh, you know, Stefan and Trey's captured that very well in, in what they said, um, and I think our students appreciate that as well, so. Thanks, John. Liam, I think you probably agree with all of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't need to say much more. Um, we're Galway situated and uh, the, the, the crux of, of the issues that Ireland are facing regarding changes to the climate and changes to how we uh, enjoy and continue to enjoy sustainably our coastal marine resources, Galway is the right spot. So like we have Connemara, we got the Aran Islands, we got aquaculture, seaweed harvesting, traditional fishing, recreational fishing, offshore wind energy, the wild Atlantic way, 
education, you know, uh, re renewing renewing the ex-urban uh, communities and 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 tapping back into some uh, of those lost economic uh, skills is is something that that we focus a lot on. So um, you, you can't get it by just going to university. You got to go to a place that's that's in the midst of it and always in the midst of it all. Thanks, Liam. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Um, and I and John, I really liked what you mentioned as well about um, I suppose the both in classroom but out, outside of the classroom experience and kind of fully embracing everything that the city and the in the wider region has to offer. Um, John, one question actually as well. Um, you mentioned about the field trip to to Bosnia within your talk about your program, which is really interesting and, and strikes me as being a, a, an amazing opportunity and something very unique. Could you just talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure I can. Um, you know, hopefully next year, um, COVID uh, permitting, we will be able to go again. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a way of sort of culminating our, all of our programs into an international development setting that's hugely challenging and kind of prompt students to sort of activate all of the sort of learning and knowledge that they've acquired in Galway um, by working with a range of NGOs, the United Nations Development Program we partner with every year. And, you know, they go out and they work in communities effectively, and they present a project every year to the UNDP at their headquarters in Sarajevo. And, you know, it's incredibly heartening because there's, it's the same trajectory almost every year. And I'm sure, you know, Trey, Stefan and Liam will, will testify to this as well, is that students are on a learning curve in the same way as we all are. And it, it takes a while to get a foothold into working with a community. It takes confidence. It takes, um, you know, returning to, you know, older questions thinking again, working with the community, working with your colleagues. And, and it's a very iterative process. And in that sense, it's a really sort of, um, you know, very real experience of how, you know, field analysts work, how people who go out and work in, in the UN work actually. So it's kind of simulating that. And, you know, every year our students produce really, really outstanding, um, you know, research proposals to the UNDP uh, in Sarajevo. Uh, many of them have been activated, you know, with, you know, hundreds of thousands of euros being put behind those programs um, on environmental justice concerns, on social justice concerns. You know, these are ways in which students can make a difference. And, you know, that's really, really heartening. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I'm sure all of the others will be able to testify to that. It's really ultimately the most satisfying aspect of teaching a master's program is seeing it culminate in that field environment whereby students can say, yeah, I worked with the UNDP in Sarajevo, that's on my CV. My research proposal fed into a social justice cluster initiative in that community. Um, and that happens every single year. And we can stand by that. I'm sure Liam will tell you the same thing about his students, Trey's and, and Stefan can, can certainly say the same as well. Um, and that's that's a great sort of thing to be able to stand behind um, for all of our programs. And it's something that, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. It's, it's really the result of a commitment to a very, very carefully um, thought out um, field-based learning module um, in all of the programs, I think. You know, it takes a while to get there. Um, you know, it was only in our second year, we're 11 years going now, um, it was the second and third year where we really started to get those connections and things worked way better. Um, and I'm sure the others will be able to say the same. But yeah, it's very satisfying to see that students acquiring and appreciating and, and gaining crucially, I think is a key thing when they leave here. Because, you know, we want people to be able to make the difference in life. You know, we don't want it to be dominated by people who, you know, um, activate knowledges that are just not informed enough. Um, you know, the Trumps of this world um, will only exist if we don't, you know, step up and, and make more uh, positive contributions. And, you know, our students are more than capable of doing that. Thanks, John. And, and I suppose another theme that did really run through all of your talks were about that contribution to society and wider society. Um, which I think, you know, is really powerful. Um, and, uh, you know, I think there's a lovely kind of red thread throughout all of the programs. So I suppose for students who are interested in, you know, 
understanding how to contribute uh, to society. I think all of the programmes that were discussed here today um, address that. So I'm just going to check if there are any questions from anyone. Um, Owen has asked here, um, Dr. Carr, what are the academic requirements for coastal and marine environments? And can you let us know about the, the cruise that you um, spoke about as well? I'm, I'm thinking it's not a Caribbean cruise, but about the actual um, part, of, part of the program, if that's okay. Just, just close, your eye, close your eyes and think of tropical breezes. Uh, yeah, oh, and good question. Um, generally, generally speaking, we, uh, the, the, the application portal will say that they were expecting a, a 2-1 or an equivalent. GPA, so on a four point scale, that'd be about a three or three one, somewhere around there. Um, recognizing the fact that uh, some students, uh, and I can speak to my own academic history, uh, some students excel in, in relevant courses and, and their overall GPA might not be reflective of, of that, that excellence. So if you, if you have something, you know, less, less than savory grade and underwater basket weaving or, or stuff like that, um, that's that's all right. We we look we look for re relevant um, marks in in relevant courses, and and then we also look for progress throughout years one, two, three, and, and four, and so on. Um, and, and and as I mentioned, it's not it's not essential to have a, a geography degree um, any more than it is not essential to have a marine science or a linguistics degree. Um, everybody will come with the skill set. And, and we, we, will, we will work on that skill set and you also develop additional skills along the way, professional skills, uh, report writing, uh, basic science, how to work with the group, how to work with the group well. Um, that's, that's, all, that's all central to the, the, the course taught portion of, of the year. And then the dissertation side kind of accentuates some, some of those skills. So when you get paired with a supervisor, you know, one of the first conversations you have with the supervisors, what do you want to do next? You know, do you want to go on to a PhD? Do you want to get into NGO work? Are you looking to go back to, you know, your hometown and take some of the lessons you learned in Galway and apply them, you know, wherever you're from? Uh, that's, that will be the place then that the dissertation takes on an element of, of your professional development. Um, to your second question, uh, it's, we've, this is year seven, I was, it's hard to do the math this time of year. It's like last year's classes, two classes ago. John and Stefan understand that quite well. Um, but but we've, we've, we've had a cruise uh, every year since I've been part of the MSC. And it's a, it's a four day cruise. And it's, a, it's done actually early in the year. And it's, and it's meant to develop and accentuate some of your, your more methodological based skill sets. Uh, in terms of doing at sea research, so designing at sea research, you know the, the the difficulties, the challenges of working at sea, and then and then once you're kind of brought it aboard, hate to use that pun, but that's what it is. Uh, you take some of the skills from class and and from um, some of those pre lab activities, and and then they're they're put to the test aboard uh, the Voyager. And the Voyager, in years past, we've been going out of Rossaville, which is out west in Connemara. Uh, we've been this year we left out of Galway Harbor. Uh, we've been based out of the islands and next year uh, our expectation will be to run our cruise out of Donegal. So we're heading we're heading up the coast uh, a bit and asking each year we ask specific questions and and the training that the students enjoy is relevant to some of the research questions that we're asking. So in the last couple of years, we've been asking paleoclimatological questions and looking at past climates and evidence of climate change. Uh, and now we're, we're beginning to move into more uh, pressing issues regarding uh, coastal waste, marine waste, litter, uh, pollution, and, and sediment transport. You know, up in Donegal, there's a lot of that going on where beaches arrive and disappear and understanding where this where the sediment goes is, is part of the questions that we'll be asking next year but it's only unofficial right now so, you know next 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 three or four weeks we get the official word and we get the document etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, but that is that is kind of that's the scope of that work thanks for the question thanks liam thank you um, John, um, Philip has a question just yes, around see, the yeah, field trip yeah. to Bosnia. So if that can't go ahead and, and you know, hopefully we will be in a position um, that it can, is there an alternative? Yeah, no, 
Thanks, Elaine. And good question, Philip. Um, yeah, this year, for example, we're 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 not going to Bosnia, which is you know a great disappointment to us. But um, and the alternative is we're going to Northern Ireland, and we're going up. Uh, we've tentatively put it in in the calendar for the you know as late as possible before the dissertation. So it's going to be May. So uh, my wife, my wife works in antibodies research. She assures me that we're going to have a vaccine um, in some capacity um, by a brown March. <laughs> there is a prediction. You heard it first. Um, but in all seriousness, though, we have thought very carefully around this. And you know, health and safety protocols will be you know really foremost in our minds. So. The Northern Ireland option gives us, I suppose, the ability to be able to manage it a little bit better. Um, there's less portals to go through, airports and so on. So we can sort of stage it in a way whereby we don't really um, have the risk that you would associate with going on a field trip overseas involving airports and so on. So I, I think it's, it's, it's very doable. Um, it's going to run this year um, in maybe a, a, a sort of more externalized way, maybe not the same um, you know, direct engagement with the communities themselves, but certainly in a more external managed way, we'll be able to do that um, in Derry and in Belfast. Um, and that's what we're going to do next year as well, Philip. So it will take place the very same issues of you know security development local community working through and with communities will still apply um you know so it's 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 a different geographical context but ultimately it's the same kinds of skill sets that we'll be trying to get you to to work through from gis to community mapping to working with communities and so on so it'll be very very similar to what we would have done anyway in sarajevo or in mostar in bosnia and herzegovina so thanks john thank you um, well, thank you for everyone who has asked questions and thank you again to, to my colleagues in the School of Geography, uh, Archaeology and Irish Studies for really great um, insightful presentations. Um, I'm just going to copy their details. I, in, I've just uh, copied a web link into the chat um, that has all the details of all the speakers today. So again, please feel free to reach out to any of our speakers with questions about their individual programmes. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for attending today. Um, I know that John said at the beginning, we would love to be meeting you in person, um, but hopefully um, you've gotten you know, some information, it's given you food for thought um, and allows you to kind of start considering your next step um, in your postgraduate journey. And um, just to say that there are a series of other talks happening today as well around you know, the application processes, fees financing, uh, grants, scholarships, um, et cetera. So make sure to attend some of those. Um, and yeah, hopefully we look forward to seeing you um, in our master's classes come September. So thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks to you. Well. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank Thanks, you, Wayne. Thanks for attending, folks. Take care. Bye. Bye.